In this video, I'm going to show you how to construct a for loop. A for loop is a command that's going to allow you to repeat a series of steps for every element in some given vector. The basic syntax for it looks something like this. You start with for with some parentheses after it. Then you're going to define some variable. And then you'll use this in command. And then you have to define some vector that you want to have it step through. So variable is just representing, going to represent each element in this given vector here. I used SEQ to stand for a sequential vector, but it really can be any vector you want. Then you follow that with some curly brackets and some steps that you want to have repeated. This is the basic syntax for it. For every element we call var in this vector SEQ, we're going to perform these steps right here. Now, a simple example of doing this will be to show you how to add the numbers one through four. Admittedly, there's better ways to do this, but this will illustrate the point for us. So we're gonna total one through four here. Now, if you were doing this in real life, you'd think to yourself, well, I have nothing. So that's what I'm gonna start with. And then we're going to say, well, for each, each number, one through four, I wanna add that to some previous values there. So I'll start with four here. And then I'm going to make up a variable, I'll call it i. So for each i in this vector, 1, 2, 3, 4, what I want to do is think to myself, well, I'd take my value for x, and I'd add on the value for this guy i. Right? What that's going to do if this guy is 0 to begin with, the first time it comes into this loop, it's going to look at number 1 here. That's going to be the value of i. So it's going to have, add x and i together, or 0 and 1. Now what I need to do though is save that value someplace. So I'm going to reassign that to the variable x. So the first time it comes into this loop when it sees the number 1 here, it's going to have the x from outside the loop, which has a value of 0. It's going to have the value of 1 here. It's going to add them together, which will give me a 1. And then what will happen? It will assign that to the value x. That means that the next time it comes into this loop, x will no longer have a value of 0 it'll have a value of 0 plus 1, which is 1, and this i is going to then become the number 2. And so if I go through and I do something like this, I'll be able to get the total of 1 through 4 here. I'm just going to run all the commands. I'll go up to code and go down to run region. I'll say run all, and you'll see you get 10 out of that. Now to see a little bit better of what's going on here, I'm going to tell it to print the value of x there. All you got out of this one, you're doing the for loop is the final result. But I'm going to have it give us the results as it goes through here. So what you'll see happen when I run everything, if I bring this back up, it started out, there was the 0 to begin with, then it added 1 to that, and so that's what x became. Then it added 2 more to that, so that gives me 3. Then it added 3 to that, which gives me 6. And then it added 4 to that, which gives me 10. So it went through each one of these values here, and for each value, it executed this step using the updated value of x. So that's the basic idea behind a for loop and how you can use one.